شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. And Allah knows best. It's a very good question here. تفضل. هل يجوز أن هل يجوز لنا أن نطلب العلم أو نتعلم القرآن أو نستمع إلى دروس ومحاضرات من طالب علم يوافق منهجه منهج الخوارج كأن يقول بالخروج على الحاكم ويكفر الحاكم ويدافع عن داعش وعن منهجهم وأعمالهم. Is it permissible for a student to get knowledge from a person who supports the Khawarij and he's from the Khawarij? He supports ISIS. He speaks against the leaders of the Muslims. He encourages people to revolt against the leader of the Muslims and so forth and so on without explaining tafasil and giving examples because now is not the time for that. I would just say clear and straight and direct. Anyone, anyone who supports ISIS, anyone, even if he's the only one who knows the Quran in your city, he's the only one who can teach you the Quran in your city, tajweed correctly, don't take knowledge from him. Don't take knowledge from him. And that's because the harms of sitting with that person is going to be far greater than the benefit. You know how you learn the Quran as English speaking people, transliteration, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, and you write it in English, it's difficult to learn the Quran that way. And you're not going to read it correctly. But Allah told you, Fattakullaha mastata'atum. Do the best that you can. If that's all you have, either that transliteration and you're going to do it wrong. Or learning with someone who is from the Khawarij. Then don't take the knowledge from the Khawarij. Why? Because we're not students and we don't have knowledge. And Imam al-Bukhari, those ulama of al-Hadith, those big scholars, sometimes they took narrations from people who were from the Khawarij. But they had rules and regulations about when to do it and when not to do it. And we're not Bukhari. We're just little people who don't know our elbows from our ankle bones. And when you go to learn from these type of people, you're just going for the Quran at first. And then after that, before we know it, you, the brother who we like, the one who we know, your mother, your father, you're a decent kid. You become from the Khawarij and you wind up in Syria thinking this is what Allah wants from you. So I say no. And this city, Leicester, is filled with these kinds of people. So beware and don't do it. Especially now here, here, here in Leicester. Like Benny Israel. Oh, Musa, we want this, we want this. We want the cucumbers, we want the onions, we want the adis. Musa said to them, Do you people want to change what is better and take what is worse? You're eating the salwa and the manna. Oh, and that's it. But you have the rahmah of Allah, the hidayah of Allah, the inayah of Allah. You have all of that. You want to put that aside and you want to take all of this other stuff here in Leicester? You have more than enough people where you don't have to learn the Quran from someone who is khawarichi. He was he's khawarichi supporting the khawarich. Does anyone else have any other questions, inshallah, from the brothers that are sitting here? Okay, then نكتفي بهذا القدر. We ask Allah. تفضل يا أخي. How did what? Good Muslim what? Ruler, ruler. How should a good Muslim ruler arise? How should the Muslim deal with the ruler? The Muslim deals with the ruler the same way. You would want and I will want our children to deal with us. I'm a husband, I'm a father. And I'm not perfect. I'm from the sons of Adam and I make mistakes. And I have a wife and I have children. Some of them are your age, some are younger, some are older. So when I do something that they don't like me doing, when I say you're going to come with me today, you are going to come with me today to break our fast at so-and-so's house, but you wanted to go and hang out with your brothers, your friends. I say, no, you're coming with me. And you had already planned to hang out with the brothers. But now as your father, who you have to listen to, when I tell you something that's not haram, you have to listen to me now. 
You try to tell me, but Abby, we set this up. I gave them some of my money. I said, I'm not trying to hear that. You coming with me. Now as we're driving in the car, and you're sitting in the front seat next to me or the back seat, you can't sit in the back seat, you're upset. You can't slap me in the head while I'm driving to show me that you're upset with me. I want to go with them, Abby, and you're looking at my head in the back. Just imagine, you're looking at my head. And Shaitan is making with swas. In Ramadan, he's tied up, but he's making with swas. And you just slap me in my head. And you start talking bad to me in front of your other brothers and sisters. Causing them to also disrespect me, the father, and my authority. No, we have to deal with that ruler of the Muslims the same way when you become a father. The same way that me as a husband and a father, I want my wife, I want my children to deal with me. Sometimes I'm not wrong. I'm not right. I'm doing something they don't, that they didn't want. They want something else. You have to eat humble pie and bite the bullet and pump your brakes and slow down. That's what you have to do. Because if you slap me in my head, I'm going to stop that car and there's going to be trouble in the land between you and me. If you slap me in my head, can you imagine that? You slapping me in this head right here. If you slap me in my head, one of my kids slap me in my head, I'm going to stop that car. And maybe I won't even stop that car. Because he slapped me, I crashed the car. Because he slapped me. And everybody in the car gets destroyed. Everybody dies. Because, because you were selfish. And that was the way you wanted to explain, express yourself. But inshallah, I wouldn't crash the car, inshallah. But I will tell you. I'm going to get out of that car and you're going to pay a price. I promise you that. So that's how we deal with him. And you're going to get married one day, little man, little brother. You're going to get married and you'll understand what I'm saying even more. That you want your wife to respect you. You want your children to respect you. And when you're wrong, okay, I may be wrong, but don't revolt against me. Sheikh, can I add one hadith to that? Sure. Be my guest. The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, سَيَكُونَ أُمَرَانْ بَعْدِي لَا يَخْتَدُونَ بِهَدِي وَلَا يَسْتَنُونَ بِسُنَّتِي There will be rulers after me, they won't take my guidance as a guidance, and they don't take my sunnah as a sunnah. And then the Prophet said, خُلُوبُهُمْ كَخُلُوبَ الشَّيَاطِينَ فِي جُثْمَانِ الْإِنسِ Their hearts are like the hearts of the shaytan in the body of an ins. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave you the worst type of example. People always say, well, he's oppressive, he does this, he does that. In the end of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, وَإِن ضُرِبَ ظَهْرُكْ وَأُخِذَ مَالُكْ فَاسْمَعْ وَاطِعْ If he beats your back and he takes your money, listen and obey. Anyone else any, got any other questions? No, we're going to stop right here, inshallah, because I have to get back to um, Birmingham. The time in Ramadan is, has barakah. Yeah. Inshallah has barakah. We got to take care of our time. I ask Allah Azza wa to make this a blessed Ramadan for you people. Ramadan Mubarak. كُلْ عَمَنْتُمْ طَيِّبُونَ and that he makes it so that we can get the most out of this Ramadan. So I want to...